Hello and welcome to this Digital Foundry Let's Play with the 2005-2004 Beast Machine sporting an Athlon 64 X2 3800 Plus and an NVIDIA GeForce 6800 GT. And today we're playing Far Cry, the original Far Cry from 2004. And to talk about this, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, John Lindemann. How are you doing there, John? Hello and thank you. <laughs> today we're... <laughs> Sorry, I just I'm mesmerized by this intro here. Actually, I forgot about how crazy this is. It's just it's pure nonsense. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, okay, so Crytek, obviously they've made one of my favorite games of all time, Crisis. Yes. Before then, they had Far Cry, which was their first retail game. Yeah. Before that, they had that cool dinosaur demo or something, didn't they? Yeah, the uh, the Dino Exile demo, yes. which showed off their tech on like G4 stuff. Uh, but then Far Cry obviously came out, which is the only real game they made, and it was basically, I would say, it's like Crisis Before Crisis came out, except a lot less competent in many, many areas. Um, for the time, I think it's a really, it was a pretty good game for the time. Uh, the rendering is very interesting, but it, all the concepts that this game has were kind of perfected and yeah. made really good in Crisis. Including the art direction. Uh, which is including the art direction, which you're seeing right here. Uh, this this intro video does not do the game well. Let's just say that. Let's actually get to the loading screen here. Um, today, I have done something different. This PC originally had Windows Vista installed on it. Yes, not Vista. Windows Vista installed on it, 64-bit uh, edition. And I was f having huge CPU problems when playing uh, Doom 3, for example, last time I played with John. It has to do with kind of background processes running in Windows, but also the thing is just heavier on this CPU than the CPU can really handle. So I've switched over now. I'm dual booting Windows XP, the 64-bit edition, Ooh. Service Pack 2, and we're playing the 64-bit edition of Far Cry. So 1.32 patch with all this great stuff like the 64-bit EXE, the... Um, HDR rendering, which you can see right now on my character as it kind of flare blooms the light on top of him, or like right there, whoo, HDR. Yeah, and that, a lot of that stuff was very new for 2004. So obviously, when the game oh. launched, it did not support HDR, but it was already impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, Far yeah. Cry was one of the first games I remember playing that had a representation of a large jungle environment. Yeah, and same here. It has a lot of cool pixel shader effects and bump mapping, oh, yeah, we'll and talking. obviously the HDR here with eye adaptation and like the flares and everything. That was a big feature added to a later patch, but yeah. only for certain. I think it was DX9 cards at the time. It's DX9.0 C cards. Yeah, because this used a um, higher precision uh, format of HDR that allowed also like it to be like more uh, like higher precision but also like buffers that could be put on top of it and manipulated so you could get um, uh, like bloom interacting with it very easily and also these flares interacting with it very easily because there's there's like three modes basically low dynamic range uh, which is the base game pre-patch 1.3 then two or like actually there's like a dozen different modes of HDR and I'm showing off the one right now that has lens flares with it too but there's also a cheaper one that does not have lens flares but yeah so um, I guess there for those that might be confused throwing around the HDR terminology just in oh, case yes, you know yeah. we should mention that this is this refers to like sort of the internal calculations like the pipeline that the game is rendering at what mm -hmm. you're still seeing is still basically mapped to the SDR space, but games have been doing this internal high dynamic range rendering for years now. And this was one of the yeah. early examples of it, obviously. Uh, but only in the last few years do we actually have displays that can, you know, actually show this by adjusting luminance values in real time that are much wider than your typical standard uh, dynamic range display. So yeah. in that sense, you could translate this game to work with a modern H HDR display with some work, no doubt. Because it's already doing the necessary calculations, so... Oh yeah, it totally would. Uh, that's cool. I guess in this game it's also kind of cool because it's very vibrant in general, and has a lot of great colors. Yeah, it's very colorful. Um, so like, 
I guess the the added blooming and um, kind of lens flare that you get on top on top of the eye adaptation. Like when you look out here right now, it looks like so vibrant. If you back up a little uh, bit, and you see the way like the, see the blue out. beyond the whiteout, there's those blue fringe edges on objects. That was something that was mm -hmm. very common with all these early HDR implementations, where developers would just oh, yeah. bloom the heck out of. The results and you get like that sort of blue haloing around things and uh it's just like a a telltale look of this era i kind of like it though mm -hmm. i i do like it in this game because it's it only really shows up really badly when there's a lot of uh, obscuring stuff like when i get outside later we'll see that it's a little bit more subtle i would say actually quite a bit more subtle there's, there's too much uh dynamic range in here when you get outside everything's really bright so the eye adaptation kicks in now we're getting in <laughs> for some of the amazing story in this game. You're trying to rescue, I guess, your partner. And these mercenaries have taken her captive. That's about it. Uh, and of course, being a, a Crytek game, shenanigans happen with either aliens or mutants uh, halfway through the game. And in this case, it's mutants, and it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, in terms of other things, as you can see, it's kind of chunky looking right here. Oh gosh, that guy might see me. Uh, it's kind of chunky looking right here. It's because I'm running the game at 1024 by 768. Um, this game on the very high settings, which are required to run it in HDR, um, it's very, very heavy. Anything higher than 1024 by 768 would see most of the FPS most of the time in the 30s or 40s. Here, I'm going to have like a dancing uh, triple buffered V-Sync going on. Yeah, this was a very yeah. heavy game for the time, wasn't it? Oof. Physics. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm getting up here. We're seeing one of the cool CryEngine one features that, um, oh you yes. know, obviously was all the rage during that time. Was this game mixed baked lighting with stencil shadows? So like stencil shadows that we've also seen in Doom three, and like here you can see them dancing around the room as I move the light. And but they're really only used in indoor areas. When you get outdoors, most of it's baked lighting and some projected. Um, shadow maps that actually are real time so that looks like a mix of stencil earlier. shadows and like projected sort of a shadow mm -hmm. from the the light fixture from the, itself the, and the caging yeah, from around the light it. grading i always loved this uh the way this area looked too bad most of the game doesn't look like this uh it's this these i would say these stencil shadows are actually pretty rare to see in indoor scenes they're, they're obviously expensive <sighs> another amazing cutscene where we meet uh, the guy who whispers in our ear the entire game, who is, by the way, secretly bad. <laughs> uh, if you didn't already guess. This game, though, on, on, on character models, I always thought it was interesting. Stencil shadows are really good for like those awesome contact shadows that you get, and they're super precise. But for these low-poly character models, like you see from you know, our friend Jack Carver here, uh, like they look a little awkward underneath his eyes, uh, always. like. I don't know how to explain it, but like the stencil shadows on low poly models don't look really great, which is why Doom 3 avoided them for most of its models, except for like the really large, higher detailed ones. Yeah. In this game, sure. they just apply it, uh, universally to everything. And it being the year 2004, there's a lot going on in this room that they want you to do. They want to show you that like everything is a physics object uh, that you can interact with. Um, you can even. Oh, grenades over here. I do enjoy that. It's just like. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, this game was one of the first games that I remember playing. Um, obviously, this came out before Half-Life 2 and Doom 3 that had an extensive usage of physics. And I remember downloading the demo very distinctly and playing with all like the rope physics that are found across the demo. Whoa, the frame rate here, though. Um, 33 FPS, wow. 1024 by 76 CVA, zero MSAA so here. This, this specific moment sort of recalls what they well this is more like the origin of what they would do in crisis one when yeah, you would right? first emerge from that jungle the sun is rising and you catch your first glimpse of the village below that's basically this but for far cry and yeah at mm -hmm. the time uh it was just obscenely impressive i would say like it was really just yeah. i can't it's it's so it's difficult if you weren't there like the idea of having a forest like actual trees where you would go under the trees and it would feel dense enough that it actually seems as if there was real like you know coverage from those trees mm -hmm. that was such a new thing that you just didn't really see uh, and that's what made this game so unique at the time is literally just having forests <laughs> 
I know, right? It's crazy. And I think like the size of this map is not something that should be understated. You can go, obviously, to these this island over here. It's not just some sort of thing That's in the right. distance like you could maybe see in Goldeneye. You can actually go over there and there's guard towers that you'll eventually interact with as we get a bit further in this mission. And the AI, obviously, you know, when you're not interacting with them, they're just kind of standing there doing random animations and chores. The guy fishing... The other person moving boxes at a very slow rate. <laughs> um, let's uh, sneak up here and get a little bit closer. And we get a look at one of our first projected shadow maps. This game does have a few shadow maps. And just from the trees themselves. Uh, which are actually correctly um, perspective with where the sun is here. It's behind these trees. And it's casting directly onto the hut. But everything else in this scene, uh, beyond character models, like all the static geometry and such that is just baked shadows which is why it kind of looks very flat otherwise yeah i'm gonna try and i'm gonna sneak out around this side and get in here and grab the machete machete um, yeah <laughs> and yeah obviously this is before the era of ambient occlusion and the like which is something they would pioneer in crisis so when you're in these little shacks like this uh, there is no contact or ambient shadowing anywhere, so everything just sort of mm -hmm. has this like very harsh intersection. That's you know, yeah, it's not natural. It's not the prettiest. Thing. But um, no, I obviously it wouldn't be possible on this machine. But Nvidia added the option to sort of force AO into games, if I recall. I wonder if a oh, game yeah, like yeah. of this vintage would actually be a good candidate for that, and how it would actually look. Or I guess you know, it totally would does be. stuff like sweet effects or uh, reshade. Mm -hmm. I guess work with Far Cry One. I wonder. Yeah, anything that's DX Nine, um, yeah, basically reshade will work. It should work. It. Yeah, I wonder what that would it look should like. Work rather well with this game. Let's grab the assault rifle, or it's like an AR-15 or something like that. Um, one of the things that I distinctly remember about the game was the reflections in the water. Oh, yeah. And John, I know this is something that plagued you at one point in time. They work perfectly fine under Windows XP, and they look really, really good here, I would actually say. They do, say. yeah. It's one of those first games that mix these kind of planar reflections on top of water that has a distortion effect. Yep. And there's even refraction with it, too. Um, so it gives it this really great look. But for some reason, every other Windows install past XP breaks the water rendering so there's holes inside of the um the reflections in them i can probably show some footage of that right here and it looks really really weird and takes away a lot of the game's vibrancy and just kind of messes up the visuals and it has to do with some sort of windows update that changed the way DirectX 9 oh, queries yeah. are done or something like that and maybe this game went outside of DirectX 9 spec i'm not exactly sure um but it kind of breaks the game so you have to download fixes for that these days uh, but natively under Windows XP 64-bit that I'm playing right here uh, the highest settings it works perfectly fine with no problems uh, Windows Vista on the other hand yeah it doesn't work there uh, let's let's go forward a bit oh, actually we can show off one really cool thing that I like a lot about this game it blew my mind this game you're supposed to kind of play it like a predator yeah, and, uh, exactly. A big part of that in jungles is always the fact that the canopy above you is casting shadows below. Yep. In games that don't have real-time shadows, you're never going to see that. Never got it. That's games right. Of this era, and but then you go here underneath this, you this tree, yep, and yep. you can see these kind of tiger-striped shadows on your character. It's so it's weird, but it's first. I swear it's revolutionary for the time. Like, <laughs> I know it's. Right? Uh, this just do didn't exist at all. Not in any sense yeah, of the word. it really did not. And, and that was, seeing uh, this, uh, it's a big deal. You're highlighting some really issues great. there with that zooming in and everything. Is The actual gunplay is awful in this game. The act of shooting <laughs> the weapons, it never felt right. And the AI and the enemy reactions and general animation, like none of that is good. Like You compared us to what would follow in Doom 3 and Half-Life 2, both of which are very different games, so I'm not saying, you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't compare them on the whole, but they got the hit reaction down so well, specifically Doom 3, but you play Far Cry mm -hmm. and it's just the way the enemies behave and react, it's awful. And that, the, yeah. the sun effect, always takes me back to Halo 1, actually. <laughs> I know, right? The, um, this probably, I mean, other than Halo 1, I can't remember any other games that did this. So this is the second one, to my knowledge, in a pre, uh, I would say, pre-2006, through 2005 era thing where these crepuscular ways, ray, how do you say that, rays, um, 
are done in screen space to make it look like the sun is dancing through them, like as a volumetric light. But yep. it obviously is not. No, um, we're not there yet. Let's run forward. No, we're not there yet. Uh, the first game with volumetric lighting that I would know of that would come out uh, would be Fear, and then shortly thereafter, uh, Dark yes. Zero. That's right. Um, which we're going to be looking at Fear at 1.2, which will also, like this game, at 1024 by 768, absolutely destroy. That looks pretty great. I love the way you cut to that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Perfect Dark Zero for the PC? Uh, Perfect Dark Zero. No, we're not going to look at Perfect Dark Zero for the PC. Um, but I was saying Fear, when we look at Fear oh, for the PC, it's okay. going to destroy this. Uh, yeah, I played Fear on the same PC that I played Far Cry on. And while Far Cry was demanding, Fear was sort of another level. Yeah. Th- th- this Obviously, with this patch, though, it's going to be uh, quite a bit more expensive. In fact... Let's show how more expensive HDR rendering is versus not. Sure, 42, we'll 40, yep. you know, 30, 40 FPS right here with and HDR off. Oh, I'm actually CPU limited here. Oh, you're here. CPU limited here, so no impact. Oh, so it actually doesn't matter right here. Okay, turn around. <laughs> Let's uh, turn around then. Look at the, the forest, I guess. Okay. Wow, that surprises me that I'm not, that I'm so CPU limited. Then again, this is not the best uh, CPU from that era at all. No. 3800 plus is just kind of okay um there are better ones let's look right here 51 fps 48 fps turn on hdr rendering oh yeah there 36 you go. fps See, so that is a huge, huge. chunk of now, the performance this, this comes from an era where it would have been nice to be able to properly cap a frame rate at 30 frames per second with even frame pacing mm-hmm. which wasn't actually possible on the pc at this time no you couldn't do it, it it really wasn't. You would, you would, what you would really want to do is turn on vertical sync uh, and double buffer it, and then turn the settings high enough so that it never goes to. 60. Yeah, exactly. But even then, it's hard to ensure that yeah. you know and finding that balance where it's always above thirty but always under sixty. It's not all. No, it's not always you're, possible, right? You're you're really probably not going to find it. It would only take a couple years after this game when um, Unwinder, the person who's written uh, RiverTuner statistics server and then Direct3D Overrider would make that possible. And even then it didn't, it didn't usually work correctly at first. There's the uh, normal frame rate caps, those didn't work. You needed to do the um, uh, half refresh rate. Yeah, the sync? half refresh rate V-Sync. It was the only way. When they introduced, This is great looking. Yeah, I love way. that by the way. That, the colors there, that's just it's so vibrant. Do you think they... Let's take a look underwater to see if they're actually just coloring the train blue. Or... I think I think the train here is just blue. Yeah, I think it's no. it's just like the... I, I think it's I, literally just like the textures on the, the, the beach there. Yeah. It's just... A, it's just they, you can see the transition there. They just shaded it differently. Mm-hmm, right here. Literally just painted it's, it. It's, <laughs> it's, it looks... It's convincing, though. Um, speaking of the ground here, before we go on, the... With this game had so many patches. 1.0 patch of, is the game in LDR with lower settings than what we're seeing here. 1.3 patch, you know, adds in HDR. 1.32 adds in 64-bit and higher settings for like looking into the distance. And there's also, as part of the 1.32 patch, the ability to force bump mapping across the entire terrain. Oh yeah. Or I would actually say it's like normal mapping. Uh, and it looks really okay when you're like looking directly at the train right below you. But then as you move into the distance and look at that bump mapping, it just looks so awkward. It's not enabled by default because I'm pretty sure the engineers who designed the feature thought it kind of looked hideous. Um, <laughs> but it's just this game was and kind of- And for good reason. Yeah, it, this game was an experimental uh, sandbox almost for Crytek as they were developing their engine going into the future. Hence why it added an HDR over time, 64-bit and um, uh, uh, multi-core support, even as part of that 64-bit patch dual-core uh, stuff, I'm pretty sure. So just gearing up for Crisis over time. I'm gonna sneak up here. This is where the game either falls apart completely is when you sneak around and get discovered. That doesn't work. That's, that's one of the big problems with the way the AI works is one enemy spots you, they all know like a hive mind. If you snipe a guy from a... Yeah, like, this, like right there, Now he knows. He's going to shoot you in the face. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing is it's like, okay, now they're all aware. They all know where you're at. Every single Every person. And the single alarm was also enemy. turned on, Everything's too. blaring. Everybody's aware. They know exactly where you're standing. Oh, this sucks. If you're standing... Like, one of the, the hallmarks was, oh, you can stand a mile away and snipe from a distance. But 
You, mm. The second you hit your first guy, once again, everybody knows exactly where you are. Even if you're on the other side of the island, standing behind a tree, they just start firing at you. And you can hear them yelling. They're going to shoot you in the face. That guy in the shirt. <laughs> you know, uh, hey, you. get that guy. Like, like all that stuff. How do you like them apples? It's all those funny horrible now, but, one-liners. You know, it, it wasn't. It's not really. HP. It's, oh, it's not an especially this. competent shooter. Like when you get right down <sighs> to it, and also in its original form, I don't know if it's changed. I can't remember if it changed with the patch, but it was a checkpoint-driven game. Mm, it's one hundred percent checkpoint Which driven. There, I, I like you it. You can in, hack the game to allow quick saving. So I but, like that in a mm. way. Uh, I think that's what made Halo better. Is you had to master each section between the mm-hmm. checkpoints, and it works really well. But here. The distance between checkpoints was long enough, and the the enemy AI was so poor, and the encounters just not well balanced that it became more frustrating than anything else. Mm-hmm. Not in a fun it, way, especially when fighting the trigen, which are just awful. Those are the enemies that, the way, th- that pop in later. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this this game is running on easy right now, and I got absolutely bushwhacked earlier. Uh, you did. Yeah, the enemy is just hyper aggressive and surprisingly accurate even on the easiest well, settings. I have a solution. What do you think? God mode? <laughs> Get good. <laughs> look, look, this, where's this coming from? Oh, I, I can probably blow that up now that I think about it. This game's all about no, environmental just, interaction. That looks awful. Horrible frame rate. Yeah, it did look pretty bad. Yeah, this to me, this game is very much a tech demo, uh, which was interesting. So this came out in the first half of t- 2004, Whereas Doom 3 was in August 2004. And I remember being kind of blown away by the sheer difference in them. Like, obviously, they went through very <laughs> different things. But Doom 3 is so polished with such good animation. It was the end of an era. So for a long time, I used to joke that uh, PC games had what I called PC animation. And basically, any time oh, yeah. a game had bad, janky-looking animation, I would say, oh, it has PC animation. And I only said that because <laughs> that was how it was, right? PC games yeah. in general, I hate to say it, they didn't. They typically exhibited very poor animation. And in comparison, honestly, a lot of the especially Japanese developed console games, uh, they focused more on very smooth animation. And in the end, it has nothing to do with the PC or the consoles. It's literally just the production time and wh- where the developers put their efforts. Right. So yeah, PC was kind of uh, during this time period focused more on simulation yeah, experiences exactly. I would say with less linearity uh, so they wouldn't spend all the time on animations which look great obviously but they would spend more on the kind of systemic world interaction Precisely. this is running at 60 fps almost now That's obviously right. Doom 3 was the game that changed that for the PC and that was more oh, cinematic yeah. driven but that was the first PC oh. game I remember where oh, the animation God, quality nice. was just exceptional within the game itself this though uh, some some of the characters running, no, the, running that, right that there is okay. Not, no, that looks all, that looks terrible. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh jeez, I'm gonna die. Although again one soon, of my huh? favorite things this about Deus so Ex One was like when you would be spotted, the enemies would go into a full-on sprint, but then rotate on an axis to turn oh, around. Okay. Right? <laughs> so like they would turn around in place, but they'd be running at full speed while doing so. And I always thought that was hilarious. So there's some charm to it. Uh, obviously, Crisis would be a massive improvement in this department. Yeah, Crisis is an amazingly animating game for the time period. Big time, yeah. Very, very good looking. Big time, wow. This is a cool so area, a, though, isn't it? Yeah, Dirt. I'm very CPU limited here, though. Can you use the hang glider? I, I can. I want to grab some HP before I get out. I'm pretty sure there's some over here. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you that for this time period pc games in general okay switch view i, I almost I sw- I, it's not entirely true because there was obviously some, some western studios that excelled with animation but in general i kind of feel like it was more an east versus west thing japanese mm-hmm. games tended to feature stronger animation but less freedom and mm-hmm. western games tend to feature less polished animation but more freedom during this period mm-hmm. you usually didn't yeah. get both <laughs> No, like, never. I would never wow. say Grand Theft Auto has great animation work, right? It, do- it does not. <laughs> but it was extremely uh, open-ended. So This is a really big level, by the way. It is. Wow. Yeah, this is um, um, It's pretty cool. This is this helicopter, even. Oh, And it's, of course, because this is Far Cry, absolutely destroying me on the easiest difficulty settings as I'm trying to just survive... Oh, and everything. God. Look how much stuff just shows up to take you out. Like, you know what? Let's they send the in trigens. the cavalry. 
Um, yeah, this game, it's, uh, I beat it back in the day. I, know. I honestly have no idea how I did very and I'm difficult. playing this right now. Don't you go into like a um, volcano or something? Or I can't remember. There's like some kind of research center you would go way down to the middle of the island on or something. Yeah, you start at the volcano level, then go into the research yeah, lab and yeah. find the trigens inside it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is where it starts. Maybe not, though. This I'll, I'll notice it re immediately as the level loads. Probably not the, the right The trigen enemy, like the design. This is good looking. Really, wow. really nasty. But this, though, this is not. This, this looks is, great. This is really nice. This is good looking. This is where the game excels. I mean, it's at that magic hour where every game wants The magic to hour. <laughs> the magic hour, the golden one. See, the, I, that's why oh. I subscribe to the theory that having um, defined times of day that change based on context is better than having a dynamic time of day system. Because more often wow. than not, uh, when you have a real-time time of day change, it's, it's going to look less good, right? You only have mm -hmm. so many of these magic it. hours during a game. And in this case, this level at any other time of day would probably be very unattractive looking yes. in comparison to how it looks now. This is, this is excellent. Um, they want you to sneak around here. And that looks really good. But there's no stealth system, so... Yeah, the stealth in this game is just don't shoot. Because um, even if I start whacking a guy with a machete, I'm pretty sure he's going to alert all the entire island to start hunting me. It's just not a really good kind of design. It's very prototype of what you'd see in Crisis, which is still not perfect, obviously, but much better than... Ooh, this guy is... He, if this was Crisis, he'd be urinating. I'm going to try and sneak <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, my... No, see, it's just, this, this sucks. This, this, at least he died in one shot. Ooh, that HDR though. It's probably another thing absolutely wrecking my frame rate right now. 42, 43, I do have a machine gun. Well, that death animation didn't look too bad. It looked all right-ish. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. In terms of other cool graphical features that some of these patches added in, um, the 1.30 patch that adds in HDR or the 1.32, I can't actually remember off the top of my head, also added in a rudimentary form of parallax mapping. Uh, it is not, though, found in the main game. They didn't redo the art for the main game to add it in for certain um, assets or textures or things like that, uh, but instead uh, made separate levels that show that effect off um, and they're test levels too so they're not actually very interesting to look at that's right other than that user made ma uh, maps uh, could also take advantage of it which is where i actually only really ever saw it that is very good looking as i get shot at wow <laughs> did you see that guy just beeline in front of me and die oh my gosh that's what they like to this do, right? This is on the right? easiest settings. I know, right? They're coming right at me and just dying. It's so bad. Um, I so very much so prefer Crisis to this game. And I'm about to die again on the easiest settings, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's... That's, that's, cry, try that's find, Far Cry, baby. That's Far Cry for you. Let's try and find some cryogens and close this video out. I just love how oh, no oh, you're in <laughs> yeah. multiplayer. No one's playing right. online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, multiplayer in this game is kind of deathmatch and team deathmatch, and I think there's a capture of the flag. Now, as well. do you remember that uh, Ubisoft ported this game to PS3 and 360? Dude. Very, yes, very they, late in the generation. They they also changed quite a bit of the graphics. Yeah, it's uh, quite it different. Too. It's a really, it's actually an interesting port in retrospect, which mm -hmm. had that far, really far. awesome water system. Yeah, they totally modded that out. That Far Cry Instincts for the 360 was it called instincts or was no. it called instincts predator uh, i can't remember now. something it was some like that. that offshoot game some, yeah that, that game was very different than far cry it was much more linear um but had a really cool graphics on base xbox and xbox 360 way better i would say in many aspects than uh far cry on pc it yeah. added in uh things like real-time shadow maps from every object actually yeah if yeah I recall it was a neat Very sort cool of first game. step into that generation. Lots of cool, mm -hmm. just more visual tweaks and fun stuff in there to look at. And being early gen, I'd imagine it's one of those games that runs pretty well. Yeah, like 30 it does. FPS, yeah, exactly. Uh, 1280. 
by 720, unlike late gen Xbox 360, which for the most part wasn't very great. Ooh, we're getting some oh, taste man. of that. Look at the, you can yep. see the, <laughs> it's, a, it's just, a, that's cool, admittedly, uh, but the, this is before most volumetric lighting, so it's just a geometric cone yeah. that intersects very poorly with the geometry underneath it, but you get some of that nice the nice normal maps mm. when they were all Using wet the map. like that you know <laughs> wet normal maps everywhere yeah everything looks like this i'm using the normal map compression as well to save on video memory this game also oh look at the trigen uh oh and there he scripted is scripted sequence that was really the awesome looking. normal map on the door <laughs> oh baby <laughs> oh i actually really do like these uh flares are these not in the hdr version of the game let's see they are not no they're not Ooh. oh they just have like the little circles there mm -hmm. they have the like uh, unreal kind of billboard uh billboard yep. uh, flares uh, that take a bit to disappear when you look through the wall actually. yeah they're a bit slow and then you turn on hdr which is Oof. let it uh, i adapt for a second yeah it needs to that is pretty cool. They didn't even have flares, uh, real-time flares in um, Crisis. See, this That's is very... something that uh, Guerrilla Games went hardcore with on, Cri or what is it, Killzone 2. They put mm -hmm. all kinds yeah, of, tons flares of flares everywhere. Like, that was the thing. That, oh, look how, oh my gosh. This, look at this. this is... <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with this? I, Are those other teeth? He's got, he's got three mouths. Uh, and his eyes so... and just... Oh man, I cannot like the the degree to which their art direction improved between this and Crisis. It might be <laughs> one of the greatest leaps we've ever seen. Yeah, it is in terms of art direction. My goodness, this is hilarious looking. This is like below serious Sam level. Honestly, this is this is really bad. Um, it actually does look like story, a serious Sam enemy. The, the story is, in this game is you go on this island. Mercenaries are there. Mercenaries are there to protect the science research project yeah. that is trying to create super soldiers and they were testing the super soldier serum uh on primates and apes and things like that and the main enemy you face in the game are these trigen at the later half of the game and they, and they are jump like crazy awful to far fight. they are not fun to they're fight. awful this is an interesting scene though there's there's stencil shadows but yep. it's only applying to certain objects um the dynamic objects in the scene but the static objects like this, uh, which is presumably a brush here or something like that, is not casting nope. any. It's kind of weird looking. Um, I honestly do not remember. Where I to mean, go from stencil here. shadows are still pretty expensive for this time. Oh, here we go. So doing them Ooh. on every object, you know, for yeah, the entire world no. geometry, that would be pretty expensive. Oh, that's cool. Is it just like a? Yeah, that is. A, yeah, it's a. It's a. Is that a cube? Is that a cube map? Yeah, it looks to be a static cube yeah, yeah. map, one that doesn't change with your position at all. Yeah, you're right. And there's even a dead guy in it, if you look really closely. Uh, that's it's pretty cool looking. And honestly, for the time, the amount of lights in this room is uh, a lot of lights for a completely forward rendered game. Uh, there's all the bake lighting above us, but these are these are real time. It's cool. It's interesting. Yeah, let's go. Oh, here we go. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, it's some. People underneath I feel us like you should kick in the Turok music right here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wore their, um, uh, I would say, their inspirations on their sleeves in this game. Uh, Turok is a massive inspiration. Jurassic Park is a massive yeah. inspiration. You remember um, Turok Evolution and how awful that is? <laughs> yes, Turok Evolution is worse than this game, I'm going to say. Much worse. Uh, this game has redeeming qualities for visuals to certain aspects. It's an interesting technological, there's a trigen, there's a trigen, uh, interesting technological step forward. And then Turok Evolution is just on every platform, horrible. PC version emulates a controller's joystick for the mouse. Um, it's it's junk. Wait, it's Turok junk Evolution game. was on the PC? Somehow, oh yeah, oh, it's I really right. I forgot about that. Wow. Runs at 60 FPS, but that's that's the only thing that's good about it. Oh, there they are. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Far Cry. I think we're going to leave uh, this Far Cry video here. It is a brutal game on the highest it settings is. at 1024 by 768 um, here. Even with 64-bit EXE on Windows XP 64-bit, it's just too much for this Athlon 3800+. Plus and it kind of shows 
what Crytek we're going to be doing in the future. This is a very proto version of Crisis for me. Uh, interesting stepping stone historically. But John, thank you for talking to me about this game. But of course, anytime. Of course. And if you didn't like this video of me playing through Far Cry with John here, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future and help us out, support us on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to John or myself about how about them apples and here i'll fix his little red wagon you do what you heard me i'll fix his little red wagon write a comment below or follow us on twitter and as always this is alex bidding you farewell and i'm gonna shoot you in the face <laughs> <laughs>